Well, hello everyone. What we have here is a Webasto U4840 coolant pump from a Webasto Thermo Pro 90 heater, which um, the Garcia Exploration 45 boats have installed, if you choose that option. A friend from one of the other boats, similar to Snowgum, has sent this pump because I said I would have a go at fixing it. Um, it was leaking coolant inside and uh, it, it failed. So as you can see, I've already removed the screws. So let's see how I go with um, pulling this apart again. I have already done this, but uh, I'm reaching around the iPad here. So let's see how we go. Here's the cover that comes off. Um, and we'll just look inside here for a moment because you'll see, this is quite important. There's an O-ring here that runs all the way around. We're going to talk about that a bit later on, but I'll just put that aside for the moment. So here we have the pump and here's the, there's a couple of little washers here. I'll take those off. Oh, there's a little rubber cap. First of all, we have to remove this rubber cap. I'll just slide that off the shaft. There it is. Boop. That comes off. Then these two little, um, washers that help keep the impeller in place. Just slide those off, put those down, then the impeller just pops out. Dunk. Then there's a rotating magnet in here, you can see that in there. I'll just pull that out. It's a bit of a trick because it wants to go back in, but ah. there it comes. Oh, oh and all the screws. <laughs> it's grabbed all of those. Well, that's kind of handy. Um, now, this inner part of the housing here comes out of the outer housing. So I'll just get my fingernails in there. Try and keep this in the shot while I'm doing it. It's a little bit tricky to get out, but it can be done. There we are. Now this is, this little junction here I think is part of the problem. There's no, there's no actual rubber seal there it's just a friction fit and I have a suggestion as to how you could make this pump more reliable when you rebuild it. Now I'm struggling a bit here because I'm there's another o-ring I'm reaching around the iPad while I'm doing this so it's not really very ergonomic. I'll just get this out without making a huge mess. As I said, I have had this apart before and I fixed it. But I'll just show you how this is done. Just wiggle that out. Here it comes. And pull on the shaft as well. Now you've noticed that this black plastic flange has come away from the stacked cast iron there. Just keep an eye on that. There we are. That's just the outer housing. We don't need that. Now, Watch this. See how that's separated from the cast iron stack? That can be pushed back in. And in fact, it can be pulled all the way out because it is not connected other than by a friction fit inside the rotor of the pump. So I'm just pulling this out gently, easing it out. Because everything becomes a bit easier once it's out. Here it comes. Now we're seeing how that's coming out. There it is. So what we have here is the rotor part, sorry, the stator part of the pump. I'm just going to put that down. And then we have this is the rotor housing that has a shaft. If we can see down in there, there's a shaft and it's like a cup that acts as part of the waterproofing. And the magnet, I'll just remove all of these screws from the magnet. We don't need those attached to that. All nicely magnetized now. This magnetic rotor sits inside on this shaft inside that plastic cup 
and it spins in there in a pool of coolant that provides it with lubricant and as you can see the cup is complete and waterproof and so there shouldn't be any coolant getting through this cup but I think coolant is getting past this part of the flange here uh, and getting through into the electronics that we see here. The problem with this particular pump was that coolant had made it onto into this area and even though it's covered with a um, a gel of some sort you can see here from the reflection here that there's sort of gel and goo it's like a, a soft jelly kind of a silicon kind of a, a waterproofing um, there was corrosion between the two capacitors that were here I'll show you uh, how one of the capacitors blew up as a consequence of the uh, corrosion I've replaced the two capacitors that were here with these two that I stole from a motherboard from an Apple iMac and uh, it's working again um, it was this particular capacitor here that um, that blew up and let me just change the angle there and uh, I've done a reasonable job of soldering them back on um, they're nice and solid and um, well it works again the pump is working so what I'm going to suggest is that when it's reassembled the trick is I think to I'll keep that magnet away from everything else um, the trick will be to try and create a seal between there's the magnet again put it one away here's the outer housing and here's the inner part of the housing when that goes in there I would apply a bead of sealant around here so that as it fits in it seals up really well and with that extra bead of sealant then there's a much better chance of keeping coolant out of the electronics in here at the moment the only seal that keeps the insides dry is the face here meets the o-ring in there so this face goes in here the face of this part goes in here presses up against that o-ring and then when you put the screws in it pulls it tight and it, and it seals but but that's it that's the only seal that keeps coolant out of this section here keeps it out of the body there so Webasto well, could do a better job by applying sealant in this junction here where those two parts meet so if I was reassembling this to be used again in a boat I would put sealant all around there so that that seals up this o-ring here simply stops coolant from leaking externally coming out of uh, the whole body so that you would see it dripping outside uh, into the bilge um, coolant could easily be leaking from the uh, the pump uh, body there where coolant flows through there it could easily be leaking through that junction through that gap there into the electronics without you knowing about it because it's not getting past this o-ring anyway that's what I would do upon um, reassembling the thing uh, as I've mentioned this was a fairly straightforward repair to those capacitors that I showed you before um, it's it's a it's a nice little motor um, it apply 12 volts here uh, positive there negative there and bingo you've got yourself a working pump this pump runs continuously while the heater is on so um, you know it does a bit of work but this one will work again and uh, if I apply that bead of sealant maybe it'll work for longer than the original ones they seem to be failing after about three or four years um, at the moment um, and they're a bit expensive to be replacing every three or four years and inconvenient I'm told very complex to um, 
to replace, I dare say you have to bleed all the coolant out, and, uh, drain that somewhere and put uh, the new pump onto the heater. Probably have to remove the heater to be able to do that. Put it all back together again, put the coolant back in, prime the coolant. You might need the special software to be able to do that. So it's, it's not a simple job. Far better to have a pump that doesn't fail. Anyway, I hope that all helps and uh, keep enjoying your boats, folks. Bye-bye.